إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله <coughs> Indeed, the most truthful of speech and the best of words are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم And the best guidance that we have for success success in this life and the next life is through the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa shar al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kulla muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kulla bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kulla dalalatin fin nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, again we praise Allah, we praise Him and extol Him. Alhamdulillah, thum alhamdulillah. In every situation, for granting us again another blessed time. Because there are certain times in the year that are a blessing from Allah, where acts of obedience are very beneficial, and they're more advantageous, and they're gifts from Allah, and He's ready to reward and multiply that reward if you worship Him with even small actions in these times. If I were to tell you that today was Ramadan, and for the next 10 days was Ramadan, how would you plan? And if you would plan the way you normally do in Ramadan, then I'm here to tell you and to remind you that these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they are better than the days of Ramadan, and they are the best days in the year of the, Muslim, of the Muslim's life per year. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, let us look at the virtues of this month of Dhul Hijjah to remind ourselves the best, the, 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 the profoundness of the time that we are in. An Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيهن أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام العشر فقالوا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله إلا رجل خرج بنفسه وماله ولم يرجع من ذلك بشيء رواه الترمذي Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he is reported to have said that there are no days where righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than deeds done in these 10 days of the Hijjah. That's a sound out to you. More than the days of Ramadan, there's no day, deeds more beloved to Allah than deeds done in these 10 days of the Hijjah. 
So the companions, they said, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi not even jihad fi sabilillah, not even fighting in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, not even jihad in the way of Allah, except for the man who would leave out with his life and his wealth and he would return with nothing. Meaning, he would have spent all his wealth in that struggle, in that fight, and he would have lost his life at the same time. So these are no more ordinary days. But it's sad that many of us squander them to just be other days because you're not on Hajj yourself. These are no normal days. Those not on Hajj, they treat it like any old day. So don't be, لا تكونوا من الغافلين. Don't be from those who are heedless to the importance of the time that we're in. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, he said, this hadith that we just mentioned is a proof that performing the good deeds during these 10 days are more beloved to Allah than any good deeds done at any other time of the year without exception. There's no doubt to this. And it's the consensus of the ulama, of the scholars, with respect to the holiness of the times that we are in. Let's look at some of the virtues. Times that recur yearly. Look at what you do for these times that come yearly that we're not even supposed to do. Birthdays, anniversaries, all these other days that have become holidays to us. And they're celebrated. You go all out, you spend your time, your energy, your money in, in investing into them. Yet these 10 days, they come every year. Why are they not treated as an anniversary that you've lived to this day? And these are the best 10 days of the year for the Muslim. Allah, He swore by these days. And Allah does not swear by something unless it is grand. When you, in our ignorance even, when you, when you have someone of ignorance and they swear by something, they don't swear, I swear on a dollar. They give you something grand. Why? So that you trust what they're swearing by. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He swore by them saying, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ Allah, He swore by the dawn, by the coming of the dawn, and by these ten nights of Dhul Hijjah. Ibn Abbas, the great Sahabi, who was given a profound understanding of the Qur'an. Mujahid, as zubair and the others from the majority of the Salaf, they stated without a doubt that these ten nights are the first ten days and nights of Dhul Hijjah, which began on Wednesday night or Thursday as the first day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in these ten days, was a day, Yawm Arafah, where He completed this deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He completed the religion of Islam on the day of Arafah. Found on the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا. Allah says in Surah Al Ma'idah, what means this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and chosen for you Islam as your religion. That is what we find in these days, the day of Arafah, which is also a day according to some of the Mufassirin that uh, that Allah swore by. والسماء ذات البروج by the heavens holding up the huge stars, and the promised day, this is the promised day of the day of resurrection. The day which is not of, should not have any doubt in your heart that it will come, where we will all be resurrected and answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْيَوْمِ الْمَوْعُودِ وَشَاهِدٍ وَمَشْهُودٍ And according to some of the Mufassireen, this is, and by the witnessing day, the day of Jum'ah every week, and the witness day, the day of Arafah. So Allah, He swears by them to also again show the grandeur and the importance of this time. From these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are part of the days, the 40 days that Musa alayhi salam, he spent with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the top of Turi Sina, on the top of Mount Sinai. قَالَ اللَّهُ وَوَاعَدْنَا مُوسَى ثَلَاثِينَ لَيْلَةً وَأَتْمَمْنَاهَا بِعَشْرٍ فَتَمَّ مِيقَاتَ رَبِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in Surah Al-A'raf, and we made an appointment with Musa, with Prophet Moses alayhi salam, for 40 nights, and perfected, for, for 30 nights, afwan, and perfected them by the addition of 10. So the term of his Lord was completed as 40 nights. The majority of the ulama, they consider these 40 nights, 30 of them, the 30 days of the Al-Qa'dah, and then the 10, the first 10 days of the Al-Hijjah, and Ibn Abbas and Mujahid, Ibn Juraj, and the others, were reported to have this view as well. So look at this specific time. And in that time, Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam directly, affirming that Allah has speech. And this is an affirmation that the people of the Quran and the Sunnah must affirm that Allah speaks. And Allah said, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَ تَكْلِيمًا And Allah spoke to Musa alayhi salam directly, meaning Musa alayhi salam could hear the speech of Allah, although he did not see him. 
So these first 10 days of the Hijjah, they are well-known days where Allah legislated that we thank Him for all that He blessed us with. قَالَ اللَّهُ وَأَذَّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ لِيَشْهَدُ مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَيَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُمَاتٍ عَلَى مَا رَزَقُهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what it means and proclaim to the people to come for hajj, to make their pilgrimage to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will come to you on every foot on every lean camel, they will come from every distant pass that they may witness and attend to the benefits. The benefits of what? Not just your akhirah, even in this dunya, that the benefits will come to you and for themselves and mention the name of Allah on the known specific days that He's provided for them from the sacrificial animals. Again, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he said this ayyam al-ma'lumat, these are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Some of the ulama, some of the scholars, held that these ayyam al-ma'lumat was yawm al-nahar, the day of Eid, and ayyam al-tashriq, the three days after the day of Eid. And that these are what we're referred to. Regardless, these days of Dhul Hijjah are blessed days where we should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. The first ten days of Dhul Hijjah, again, they're considered from the best of the year, kama qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, afdalu ayyam al-dunya al-ashar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the, the best days in this worldly life, are the first 10 days of the Hijjah. So you should be evaluating yourself what you've even done in the first day and a half compared to what you would have done if it was Ramadan. Many of us would have read a juz, a juz and a half, two juz by now, who has done so. Many of us might have given in charity already, who has done so. Many of us would have fasted already, who has done so. Many of us would have been looking for a way to do a good deed, even if it's just checking upon your brother or your sister, who has done so. This should be the mindset of the of the Muslim, of the believer, who wants to meet Allah as a believer. The best days in this worldly life are these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Again, more superior than the days of Ramadan. But according to the ulama, the 10 most blessed nights of, of our calendar are the last 10 nights of Ramadan because in them is Laylat al-Qadr wa Laylat al-Qadri khayrun min al shahr Because in them is the night of decree and the night of decree is better than a thousand months. In this time, the pilgrimage is Mecca, to Mecca is done by some. Some of us have been before. Some of us were planning to go and couldn't make it. Some of us are intending to go at the next possible time that they can get into it. With any difficulty that it comes, with any cost, they need to go. This is what is done at this time. What did the Prophet ﷺ he say about this? And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم يَقُولُ مَنْ حَجَّ فَلَمْ يَرْفُتْ وَلَمْ يَفْسُقْ رَجَعَةَ يَوْمَ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ Look at this great honor. That the one who goes and he makes hajj to bait Allah, he goes and he makes hajj for Allah's sake, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he does not speak any obscenities, nor does he have any intimacy or in, um, uh, relations with his spouse or, or her spouse. And they don't do evil or sin, then they return from that hajj like the day they were born to their mother free of sin, without any sin, Allah will wipe them all away if you just go and you sacrifice and you put yourself through that hardship for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being at Allah's service, commemorating Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and the struggle he went to calling the people to tawheed, to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his sacrifice, his obedience, seeing what our mother alayhi salam, Hajar alayhi salam, what she went through going between Safa and Marwa, doing the Sa'i, looking for water for her son who was thirsty. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this reminds us when it was said, Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, This should be our thought every day when we wake up, because Allah, He said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah did not create jinn or mankind except to worship Him. So what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what was He commanded to say? قُلْ Say, in the salati, indeed, my prayers, wa nusuki, my sacrifice, wa mahiyaya, my life, wa mamati, my death, lillahi rabbil alameen. They are for Allah alone, the Lord of the worlds. This should be our, our, our thought process on a daily basis that everything we are doing should be for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In these 10 days, as we mentioned, is the day of Arafah, the ninth day, which this year will also fall on the Jum'ah. So it's double the importance, double the reward, double the blessings, because 
Those two coincide. The great day where Allah frees many of His worshippers from the hellfire. قالت عائشة رضي الله عنها أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ما من يوم أكثر أن يع من أن يعتق أن يعتق الله فيه عبدا من النار من يوم عرفة وإنه ليدن ثم يباهي بهم الملائكة فيقول ما أراد هؤلاء رواه مسلم the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in this authentic hadith there is no day during which Allah frees more worshippers from the hellfire than during the day of Arafah. There is no day where Allah can say that this one has been freed from the hellfire than more so than on the day of Arafah. Verily on that day, Allah draws near. Allah, He descends to the lowest heaven. How? We don't ask. This kaifiyah, it's a bid'ah, it's an innovation. Imam Malik, he said it's an innovation to ask it. And he even one who would question these type of things, he would kick them out of his sittings because they would ask such a thing. This is not for us humans of low mindset to comprehend the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah, He descends in a way which suits His majesty. This is all you should ever say and know to the lowest heaven on that day. And He expresses His pride to the angels about those who made that hajj seeking His pleasure and forgiveness, saying, what do these people want from me? What do these people want from me? So you may say, okay, I'm not in hajj, arafah is arafah. But Shaykh Saleh al Fawzan, Hafidhullah, may Allah preserve our noble Shaykh and protect him because of his widespreadingness of knowledge and his firmness to stick to the Quran and the Sunnah. He said that even for the one not on Hajj, that this day of Arafah can still bring him these blessings. For the ones not even on Hajj, this day of Arafah is still one of vital importance to him and he should not be heedless with respect to it. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صوم يوم عرفة يكفر سنتين ماضية ومستقبلة رواه مسلم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said for the one not on Hajj for the one who is not making their pilgrimage the fasting of the day of عرفة it will expire two, two years of sins the previous year of sins and the upcoming year of sins this doesn't mean if you fast it that you go and intentionally sin it doesn't mean oh, I fasted عرفة and I can go and sin but you should always do these things to seek that nearness and closeness to Allah. <laughs> Shaykh Saleh, uh, Shaykh uh, Muhammad ibn Saleh al Uthaymeen, Hafidahullah, he responded to those, or Shaykh Saleh al Fawzan, it's missing me, but both of them are thiqah in their rulings, they are founded in their rulings. They said that because normally we cannot fast the day of Friday by itself, you cannot fast Jummah alone by itself, but because in this case the day of Arafah would be fasted, for the purpose of it being Arafah, then if it lands on a Friday, then if that's the only day you can fast, then there's no problem with it, even if you don't combine a day with it. So even if you can't fast Thursday next week, then fast Friday by itself, and this should be an exception to the rule, because the fasting is for the day of Arafah. In these 10 days is Yom Al-Nahr, the day of sacrifice. It falls on the 10th of Dhul-Hijjah, the day of Eid, Eid Al-Adha, the greatest day of Hajj. Why? Look what you can do on that day. You can stone Jamlat al aqaba for the Hajjaj. They stone Jamlat al aqaba They remove from their hair. They can make tawaf. They do their sacrificial animal. All of on that day. This is why it is the greatest day of the year. The best day in the sight of Allah. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِنَّ أَعْظَمَ الْأَيَّامِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى يَوْمَ النَّحْرِ ثُمَّ يَوْمَ الْقَرْرِ This hadith which is Hassan in the Muslim Imam Ahmad, the Sunnah of Abi Dawood, the Prophet he said, the best day in the sight of Allah in your year, the Blessed and the Most High, is Yom Al Nahr, the tenth day of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Eid Al Adha, then Yom Al Qarr, then the eleventh of Dhul Hijjah, the day of rest where the pilgrimage, the pilgrims, they begin their stay in Mina. So, what do we do to prepare for these virtuous times, where these acts of obedience are more advantageous and more rewarded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? The simple stuff. You don't have to go crazy. Tawbah, make sincere repentance to Allah. Istighfar, ask Allah for forgiveness. Remember Allah. Ala Allah qulub. With the remembrance of Allah will your hearts find rest. Remember Allah. Try it out for these 10 days. You'll see how you will shift your attitude, your living, your lifestyle, your thought process. Instead of listening to garbage music, you listen to the song, the song ends. Instead of going to uh, you know, muharramat like alcohol to khamr and intoxicants and drugs, the fix ends at one point and you slip right back into the, the, the mindset you were in before. 
all of those dunya made things that are haram, they end for you anyway. And you slip further and further into depression or whatever it may be. But the words of Allah will never be exhausted. The words of Allah can never do you wrong. They will always be there to comfort your heart. Thank Allah that you were able to reach a time. Be generous to Allah in, in Allah's path in this month. Give and give and give without thinking. Because it will be most rewarded during these 10 days. Exert yourself doing acts of kindness. This is what you should be planning. If you haven't done so already, to be doing to finish out these 10 days, may Allah allow us to see them. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as we mentioned, even simply the remembrance of Allah. Give up your stuff, your phones, your iPads, your iPads, your whatever it is. Give it up for these days. Remember Allah. Remember Allah. Look at what the companions used to do. Follow in their example. They were khayr, khayr salaf they were the best of this ummah. They were the best of the ummah. So we should emulate them in what they did, especially during these times. Increase in the remembrance of Allah. <laughs> Remember Allah during these appointed days. Again, the vast majority of scholars have said, this is the first 10 days of the hijjah Increase in saying, Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما أهل مهل قد إلا بشر ولا كبر مكبر قد إلا بشر قيل يا رسول الله بالجنة قال نعم Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in the hadith with which Sheikh Al Albani he graded as Hassan in a sister of the hadith of Sahiha he said a person does not make talbia for those who are in Hajj saying لا بيك اللهم لا بيك لا بيك لا شريك لك لا بيك to the end of it except that he's giving glad tidings. And the person does not make takbir. For anyone to make takbir in this time, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillah alhamd. A person does not make takbir in this time, except that he's giving glad tidings. They asked him, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, glad tidings of what? Of Jannah? And the Prophet وسلم, he said, Naam, he said yes. So spend this time remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Khattabi, he said, the wisdom behind saying takbir in these times, in these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, because even in Jahiliyyah, in the time, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, they used to slaughter their false gods. So on these, day, on these 10 days, so saying takbir instead on these 10 days was legislated as an indication of specifically slaughtering for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon His name. An Ibn Umar, an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qal, ما من أيام أعظم عند الله ولا أحب إليه ولا أحب إليه من العمل فيهن من هذه الأيام العشر فأكثر فيهن من التهليل والتكبير والتحميد. This hadith which is in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad and is authentic. The Prophet ﷺ said there are no days that are better in the sight of Allah. No days during which deeds are more beloved to Allah than in these first ten days of the Hijjah. So during them frequently say tahleel, say la ilaha illallah. Frequently say takbir, say Allahu Akbar. Frequently say tahmeed, say alhamdulillah. Look at the direction we're given in these 10 days. Okay, you're not in hajj. You can wet your tongue with the remembrance of Allah so much during these 10 days. وقال البخاري كان ابن عمر وأبو هريرة يخرجان بالسوق في أيام العشر ويكبران ويكبر الناس بتكبيرهما. Bukhari, he mentioned, رحمه الله, that Ibn Umar and Abu Huraira, they used to go to the marketplace on the first 10 days of the Hijjah, and they would repeatedly say the takbir out loud, and the people would repeat it after them. How many times have you heard any Muslim saying takbir when they're walking to their car or walking from their car, entering their home or leaving their home, entering the masjid or leaving the masjid? We're silent, we're deaf, what, we're, 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 we're being, you know, Ignorant of these times and what they hold for you to wet your tongue with the remembrance of Allah. This was the best of the companions, Ibn Umar, Abu Hurairah, and they used to say it out loud in the marketplaces so the people would say it out loud. Let that takbir ring. It doesn't have to be in unison, it shouldn't be in unison. Do it for yourself to glorify and praise your Lord. And Ibn Umar, 
أنه كان يكبر في جميع أيام العشر على فراشه ومجلسه نافع he reported that Ibn Umar may Allah be pleased with him and his father that he used to remember Allah even when sitting on his couch even when laying in his bed he would be saying this takbir he would give takbir and we have a couple of different authentic versions like we just mentioned simply Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar La ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Walillah alhamd my dear brothers and sisters in, in Islam, Atta ibn Abi Rabah, radiallahu anhu, used to say the takbir during the first 10 days of the hijjah, again walking in the streets, in the marketplaces, wherever he may be. During these 10 days, we have an uh, 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 hadith, which is the authenticity is disputed. Shaykh al-Albani, he actually authenticated it. That Hunayda ibn Khalid, he narrated upon the authority of his wife, who said, wife, who said some of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu told me that the Prophet ﷺ used to uh, fast the day of Ashura, the first nine days of the Hijjah, and the three days in the middle of the month, or three days out of every month. So whether this hadith is sahih or not, regardless, even if you go to fast, you can fast during these first nine days. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the hadith Qudsi in Amal Kul Amal ibn Adam Lahu illa Siyam fa inna huli wa ana adzi bih. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said in the authentic hadith, the hadith Qudsi, every deed of the son of Adam is for himself or herself, except for fasting, it is for me, and I will reward for it. So we know fasting is from the righteous deeds, from the good deeds, from deeds that Allah loves and He will reward for directly. So if you wanted to fast in those nine days, then you can do so. Standing in the night prayer, again, we see it in the last ten nights of Ramadan, we have blessed ten days and nights of Dhul Hijjah. Ibn Rajab, he said it's preferable to stand the night in prayer during the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah. And Imam al-Shafi'i, as well as other scholars said that it was preferable to do so. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, know that from this time also, is you are preparing for the sacrifice. At-ta'abud al-Allah bi-iraqat al-dam Worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alone without partners By the spilling of sacrificial blood As a commemoration of what Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam Had to do when he was going to sacrifice his son And then Allah replaced his son with a ram After testing his obedience In this time we have that sacrifice Those who are going to sacrifice Intending the sacrifice Even if someone else is going to do the knife cutting for you then you should not remove from your hair or your nails or your skin until that sacrifice has been performed. If you don't know, if you, if you haven't done so, then start it from now. If you're going to now intend to do a sacrifice on your behalf, even you're going to send it abroad, then you should start it from the time of your intention to not remove any hair or skins or nails. Wallahu a'lam. And we will not go through the details of the sacrificial animal at this time, inshallah. If you have any questions, about the ages, they have to be correct. The age of the animal has to have minimums for you to sacrifice it. If you're in doubt, you can text and ask and I will clarify it for you inshallah. Without a doubt, from the sunnah is for you to sacrifice the animal yourself with your hand, per household. And if you cannot do so, then you should at least witness it and take from the meat and eat some and spread some of it out. The whole one third, one third, one third, this is not legislated. It's just a suggestion, insha'Allah, that was given, but there's no legislation that being directly from the sunnah, so you can split it as you wish, insha'Allah. But usually, what's preferable is to eat some of it, give some to family or friends, and give some to those who are needy or who are in need of some meat or assistance, insha'Allah. If you cannot do any of this, then insha'Allah, the scholars have permitted that you have that animal scent abroad where maybe others will, of course, in the Muslim countries that are struggling and poor, they can benefit more. We are collecting for that. If you want to sacrifice a lamb, and if we get seven together, we may go to a cow because more people will benefit from the meat. If you want to sacrifice in Lebanon, it's $250. In Yemen, $200. Afghanistan, $200. Syria, $250. You give me an envelope or you give me the cash and your name, and we will make sure that it's done, insha'Allah, according to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, that the age of the animal is correct, that your name is mentioned, that they say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, and they mention that this is on your behalf, before they, or while they're doing the sacrifice, insha'Allah. By next Friday, we should have this collected, because this sacrifice, the Udhiyah for us, can be done on the day of Eid, after Salat al-Eid, 
or the days of Tashriq, the three days after it, insha'Allah. May Allah allow us and guide us to use these ten days to realize their importance and their virtue, to be of those who remember Him. Wet your tongues with the remembrance of Allah. Do not spend time listening to garbage, watching garbage, dealing with things that have no benefit for you. Wet your tongue with them. When you're going to sleep, be saying it. If you fall asleep, saying it, alhamdulillah. When you wake up, when you're walking, when you're, when you're moving, when you're taking a stroll around the park, when you're driving to work, when you're at work, whatever it may be, wet your tongue with the takbir and say it out loud where you can and when you can. Because this will be the way we glorify Allah according to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, as understood and lived by his companions radiallahu anhum wa اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين